you for tuning in to Kaveka Fine Arts Channel. We are broadcasting here very seriously from one of the uh, sculpture studios. And my name is Gwen. Together with me, we have. I'm Jojo. Uh, and we are second year fine art students. Um, together with Gwen today, we will tell you everything there is to know about the fine arts department. Yeah, so we wish we could have uh, welcomed you physically here, but we are going to try our best to inform you as well as possible in 45 minutes or less here. So stay and ask your questions if you want. And uh, yeah, so let, let's let's find out about fine arts department at Cali Cup. Yeah, in this episode, we will visit some of the fine arts students in their studios, have a look at the pre-exam show, and we'll interview students and tutors here live in the studio. And if you want to know more, please ask in the chat, in the live Q&A, and we, we have two uh, answerers to answer your <laughs> questions. So, uh, yeah. That, yes, that's, that's and uh, not with us in the studio today because of COVID, um, but speaking to us from Berlin is our head of department, Regina Muller. Over to you, Regina. Hello, and welcome to the Open Day. My name is Regina Maria Möller and I recently started in the position of head of the BA Fine Arts program. I wished we could have welcomed you in person, but due to the corona pandemic, we had to shift to online introduction and therefore you can unfortunately not experience the vital atmosphere of the environment. Uh, and as you can tell, I'm here even somewhere self-recording and it's uh, probably far more stiffer than it would be usually in life. But as this pandemic shows us, we are living in precarious times and it is the time in which fine arts in all its varieties and genres can take on a crucial role to shape our future. And this is what I want to strengthen and work towards in collaboration with the students and colleagues in the next coming years. Our fine art program is focused on theory and practice. We support you in your ideas and encourage you to experiment, to critically reflect and to contextualize your work. And my wish is also to go even further and beyond, meaning to expand the field of artistic practices. Here, we offer a four-year study program, full-time or part-time. And a third option is the double degree study route, which leads to a BA Fine Arts and a BA in Art History, which is provided by the Arts, Media and Society program at Leiden University. In the first year of fine art studies, the Provedoise year, the students are encouraged to experiment and to get familiar with a variety of art techniques and technologies. After this year, you will continue your studies in one of the three sections we are offering. And these sections are painting and printmaking, sculpture and autonome. Parallel to the sections, you're offered courses and guidance in critical practice, which is theory and research practices. A major attention in our education focuses on one-to-one -one tutorials, group tutorials and discussions. We want you to be able to spend time to critically reflect your ideas and to use the material or medium which translates your messages or what you want to bring across best. Our academic faculty consists of experts in their fields. They're practicing artists and theorists, writers and curators, who will advise and guide you throughout these developments and process of your projects and works. They will take you on a journey of the many faces, diversities and challenges of the arts today in order to support and strengthen your capacities and creativities and to encourage you to make a difference in the future 
of the fine arts. And last but not least, I want to mention that KLPK, the Royal Academy of Art, with its many departments in art and design, which are all open for collaborations, offer great opportunities to students to enrich each other's practices. I wish you now an interesting virtual journey through our studios and program with our hosts, students and tutors. Enjoy and I'm very much looking forward to hopefully welcoming you soon in person. Enjoy very much and stay healthy. Goodbye. Thank you, Regina, and welcome back, everyone. I'm joined in the studio by Oga, who is in graduating year of fine arts. But we are not alone. So before we talk about your experience as a student, could you say a few words about the work next to you? Uh, the work next to me is from the pre-graduation show. Um, it's one of my works that I showed there. And uh, the name of this work is The Post, and it's supposed to be the, the guard of the, of the exhibition. Super nice. Um, so why did you choose the Fine Arts Department? And um, did you immediately know that you wanted to choose sculpture? Um, I studied illustration for um, my Fine Arts studies, and I wanted to focus more on my autonomous practice because I worked for clients, uh, like in the illustration field, and I just wanted to focus more on me as an artist and explore what that means for me and for, yeah. Mm -hmm. And sculpture? Uh, sculpture, I chose the first day of the second year. Uh, I first signed up for uh, painting and printmaking, but I felt like it wasn't my fit anymore and I had to grow into more, in, into an extra dimension. And uh, yeah, I could still switch the first day of the, the second year. It was very easy to work. Uh, switch and also the teachers in the sculpture department were way more adaptive to to my practice I thought so yeah. I also based it off of the teachers yeah nice um so right now we're in a really specific time which is why we're meeting perspectives online rather than here at the academy um so can you describe what a week at Kawaka looks like without COVID and what classes are like when regulations are in place um you have classes like uh art artistic research, uh, uh, art history, and then you also have the individual talks with the teachers from your uh, department. Uh, and a lot of uh, yeah time that you just spend in the studio. I mostly go to school like at 11 and sometimes I stay till 10. Mm -hmm. And I work a lot in the, in the stations, in the 3D station, in, in the uh, metal workshop, in the wood workshop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. and. So, like, how much time do you spend on your study, and does it leave time for side jobs and extracurricular activities? Um, yeah, so I always had side jobs next to the KBK, sometimes a little bit less because I had to focus on, on being here more. Uh, I also tattoo next to school. I, I do extra, I do a lot of extra things, also more commercial things outside of school, mm -hmm. but it's like really full, it really, uh, it's all overlapping, so I'm always busy with school and mm -hmm. these things, but they're yeah, yeah, and you're falling into each other. Decide your own routine as well, which yeah. is nice. Um, yeah, so at Fine Arts, every student has a small studio, which is part of a larger shared space. But for specific things like specific disciplines and materials, students can also use the workshops. You said a bit that you've been working on in the workshops. What's your experience? yeah, uh, the yeah the 3D workshop is my most used yeah workshop there's a lot of uh, enthusiastic people there that also want to do try to make new things together with me and see how far, far we can push the 3d printers that are there and the materials um and yeah they're also growing with us we only could print like this size until now mm -hmm. and now the school uh, is, is is getting this bigger 3d printer so we can really go into yeah, bigger volumes. Yeah, exciting. Um, and yeah, now you're in your graduation year, fine arts. So looking back at your four years of study, what were the most important things you developed at the academy? Uh, I think the most important thing was that I had uh, four years of freedom to grow and people that I could reflect mm -hmm. with. 
and also yeah of course the just the stations where i can just walk in and 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 and, and create something yeah and on march 9th and 10th there will be a moment for prospective students to have online portfolio meetings before applying to the academy do you have any advice on how to prepare for this uh yes i would uh, i would say if you're making your portfolio try to not to pick your best works and put them together but really collect everything you do also the things you're not sure about and just put everything together and look at it as a whole uh, because uh, i think the teachers want to see diversity in what what your what the options are that you could explore instead of um instead of just something you're good at like it's not about like a thing you can do really well it's more about like all these routes you could explore in this school and if if those are potentially yeah yeah explorable and good for the fine arts department yeah i think that's really good advice uh thank you Oba. um because we unfortunately couldn't open our doors for you prospective students to meet current students and visit our studios. We found another way to do this. So now, um, together with videographer Donna van West, uh, we visited students Si Young Yim, uh, Janneke Stofmeil and Iver Dahl. Uh, in the next video, they will show you around their studio and speak about their experiences. Hi, to you. Hi. Hi. Thank you for having us over mm -hmm. in your Thank studio. Thank you for coming. Uh, we wanted to ask you about a double degree. I learned a lot about theory from Leiden University, and this is more related with sociology and how art related with our society, especially in museum or in project-based artwork. While I'm really learning about how to visualize my thoughts in Kabeka. I was researching on the function of fences and how does it affect us. My interest is getting extended into the concept of borders because I think border and fences have a like same affordance or same function at the same time. Could you describe to us what studio life is to you? Mm -hmm. Actually, like studio space is really good like space for talking to each other and sharing our sharing our idea about art. I think by sharing our idea together, it is like not close-minded, more getting open-minded and open-minded, and it affects my idea. Thanks for having us over. Mm -hmm. um, good luck. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for coming to see my studio. Thanks. Hi, <laughs> this way. Janneke. Hey. <laughs> Thanks for inviting us uh, over to your studio. You're very welcome. <laughs> um, you are in your fourth year of uh, printing and painting at the Fine Arts Department of the KBK. Can you tell us why you chose this direction and what it entails? Of course. Um, well, I chose the painting and printmaking department not just because I always wanted to make paintings. It was something in the first year that I thought, oh, this is something I like to do the most. But as that the years went on, I kind of started to think more about what is it that I actually want to make and not just what am I making because we have to have this discipline that we're deciding to. Um, yeah, we did just had the pre-grad exhibition, so this is why <laughs> I uh, kind of have my works just laying here. This is a work that I have finished recently. It's just nice to, to have this studio space, to have everything that's, um, that you're trying to work out also physically in the space. So it's like your actual space in a way. <laughs> and using the sewing machine instead of, of, of using a paintbrush gave me a really different uh, approach to the medium as well. And uh, yeah, they're now here because uh, <laughs> we recently moved. Yeah. Great, well, um, I look forward to seeing them at the graduation show. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> hey, 
Eber. Hey. Thanks for having us over in Thank your you. studio. What would you say has been um, important or most important in the development of your practice? The most important part about studying art, I think, is to have a community around you. Like the people that you study with, I think, are the people who push you and inspire you. And in the KBK we have, I think, we're very lucky to have a very supportive and passionate community. Can you tell us something about how you worked about your graduation? So right now I'm working on my thesis and I'm using it as a chance to reassess my practice as I've developed it over the past few years. So when I go into my final project, I'll know a bit more about how my practice works. And uh, what role do tutors play in this? Well, the nice thing about the tutors, I think, is that they all have such vastly different experiences. So get all these different opinions and then maybe pick and choose which opinions you like and which you don't. Looking at how uh, your project can be viewed from angles that you don't really see yourself. Well, thank you for, for having us over for a bit. No worries. Yeah, so don't forget to ask your questions in the chat and we will respond to those. Um, moving on, we have Andre Kreusen with us. Hello, Andre. Hey, Gwen. He's an artist and a tutor at the sculpture section of the fine art department and one of my uh, tutors, actually. Um, so, yeah, like, uh, tell us about the, the department, fine arts. Um, yeah, the fine arts department, we actually, um, we train you as a independent artist, but most of all as, as an independent mind, let's say. Um, we, we, uh, we are um, uh, divided in three sections, the painting, set, painting and printmaking, autonomous and uh, sculpture department, and the first year, which we call the proper diet. And in the first year, you um, you explore everything that uh, the visual arts entails, uh, you know, painting, video making, sculpture, whatever. And in, in the end of the first year, you choose between the sections. I see. And, um, and I'm a tutor of the second, third, and fourth year. Uh, so can, can you describe the department in a few sentences? So what what makes the department unique, and what what uh, makes it important for you to choose fine arts department? Yeah, well, well, mostly it's 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 a let's say a community of people and and teachers that have a certain mentality towards uh, art making. Uh, that's that's the most uh, that's the specific thing that differentiates us all. There's not a very clear line between all. Oh, hey, this is where autonomous departments start. This is where sculpture starts. I can talk about my views on sculpture, uh, which has a lot to do with uh, space and uh, your positioning in space, your positioning of an object in space, and how, that, how that changes. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, sculpture can be about many. Um, so it, it's also not you're not not restricted to a certain medium when you're when you're in a in a, in a certain section. You can make sculptures when you're in the painting department uh, too. But the teachers there are, are mainly uh, painters. Perfect. I see. So uh, before you apply, do you need to have uh, skills in any of the different no. methods or? Uh... No, like Oba says, uh, you know, um, it's very important when you come here to be inquisitive. Okay. And that's one of the most important things as an artist to be. You know, you question everything around you. You you develop a worldview. Um, an artist shows how he looks on the world, and that's uh, that's uh, also the, the, the significance of art in, in our society to uh, to look at the world in a different view. I see. And uh, so we have many prospective students online with us now, considering to study here at Kavika. Yeah. Uh, what, what is the learning journey um, that you know they will they will find themselves in? So, like I said, the first year you explore everything that art has to offer that you can uh, choose from, uh, and then when you change, uh, when you uh, chose a certain uh, department or section, let's say sculpture, um, 
from the, the second year on, you, you try to explore what that specific medium entails. So you explore what sculpture can be about. Mm -hmm. And in the third year, we want you to focus more on what your story is. Mm -hmm. uh, what is what is specifically your story to tell? And uh, the, the fourth year is um, is mainly um, there's there's three important moments in the fourth year. There's the pre-exam show. There's the thesis that you have to write and uh, the final exam show. So uh, the, it's divided in, in three important uh, um, time frames. And mainly you get one-on-one uh, -on -one talks uh, about your work. That's the biggest step between the first and the second year is that from the second year on, you're, you're free to make whatever you want. In the, in the first year, you uh, work with assignments. Mm -hmm. And from the second year on, you have to find your own path. And that's what we talk about, how you visualize your path, mm -hmm. your views on the on, on your surroundings. So most uh, it's it's one on one talks, but we have group talks about certain subjects and we have presentations every week. There's uh, one or two presentations. And um, we have group talks and um, in the in the theory department is uh, many group talks as well. I see. And what, what can you say about the development that you know the students have with the like, informality of class and how how free they actually are to explore for themselves. So how can you assess a student? Well, how we assess uh, students, like I said, you're, you're from the second year on, you make your own program. For, uh, you, have to, you have no more assignments for, the, for, the, for your studio <coughs> practice. You have assignments for the theoretical program. Um, but we assess students by means of competencies. And you get assessed on, on your ideas, but also how you transform your ideas, how you present your ideas, how your communication is, how well you uh, integrate in a group, how you work with a group. Uh, so there's like 14 competences that we that we grade and every um, tutor gives its own grades. So it's very diverse. You get, we call them color sheets, uh, a color sheet where you can exactly see, oh, I'm not that good in communicating, but Apparently my ideas are good, so how can I bring those two together? Mm -hmm. And you, we can talk about those specifics. I see. And how, how many how many tours will you have? Uh, um, approximately we, per, per section? Four or five uh, tutors uh, per section, and then we have also guest tutors. And the guest tutors are invited. Uh, we come up with with ideas for guest tutors because we think, oh, we should invite this artist because he's interesting for, for the, him and her. And you can also, as a student, uh, say, hey, can we ask this or that uh, person uh, as a guest tutor? So mm -hmm. it's quite diverse. I see. Well, yeah, and the, also the, the, our practices are very diverse mm -hmm. uh, from the teachers. If you, if you look at their websites, they're, they're very different from each other. So uh, here at Kavika, we have a big number of students coming from all over the world yeah. and with their own uh, experiences and Context and references from where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. How is the environment when all of us come together, and how how is it that teaching for you as well? Well, it's super interesting because we have people from all over the world, right? So um, literally, you know. Um, and I was here as a, as a student as well, way back, uh, beginning of the 90s. I think we had in my department one girl from. England and one guy from Belgium. That's it. Mm -hmm. And if you see now the, the, the difference in, in uh, countries where people come from and the cultures they bring with them, it's so super interesting. Also in the teachers uh, department, it's, it's really in development. I see. So um, in the previous interview, Obo mentioned uh, about performance. So yeah. what can you uh, suggest or, or give to the prospective students you know, tips on their portfolio and what to to uh, keep in mind when when they include their portfolios. Well, I think Olga said it really well. You know, be inquisitive, uh, be diverse in, in in what you investigate. We don't look for whether you're really good at drawing and then you draw 15 horses and you show them. That's not so interesting to us. Uh, we're here to develop uh, your skills, but 
mostly also your your mind and your view on the world. I, I've said that before. So so um, the inquisitiveness is is very important to be able to 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 look around, look see see the world, and and reflect that in in, the, in what you show in your portfolio. So make videos, photographs, try to make a sculpture. I know there's not a lot of space, uh, a lot of times in your, in your own environment, but try it. Try to do different things and see, uh, see what, uh, what that brings about. Uh, I, I think this is an important question also that many people are wondering. Maybe, sorry, I mentioned yeah. also, um, uh, please show that uh, you're interested in the arts so that you also have visited museums or, or other exhibitions, you know, in galleries or artist run spaces. Uh, uh, try to find out who, uh, which artists really um, speak to you and, and try to talk about that. And after the four years, yeah. uh, do most or all students that finish fine arts here at Kalika, do they become autonomous artists or what is it like? A lot become autonomous artists, uh, but it's not a necessity, you know. The most important is your, your personal development as a human being, you know, being in, uh, looking through the world, world with a, <coughs> um, an artist's mind that, that brings about, uh, that can bring about a lot of change. Um, I have a guy that I studied with became a d director of um, in, a, in a ministry of, of the waterworks in, in Holland. Uh, people become organizers. Uh, people are, are hired as artists in in, um, in corporations to uh, think about um, uh, a difference in directions. You know, it's 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 more than art alone. Well, thank you, Andre. Uh, okay. Yeah. So. Um, so the students in the final year uh, who are about to find out what life is going to be like after graduating, they just had their pre-exam show uh, recently, which luckily can be, uh, could have been visited physically. It was a uh, very good show. Yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, we will, we're going to show now on the screen um, a video made by Tanya Busking of, uh, yeah, of this exam, pre-exam show. <laughs> yeah. his neck and his eyes. When I am sitting alone, a novel of glass appears around the chest and a beautiful vacuum can be seen inside. I think that because of this vacuum too, I can continue living. We are carrying the weight of emptiness slowly. Going back and forth like waves.
a short video review of the pre-exam show, which took place several weeks ago. If you want to see how these students further develop the work they presented, be sure to check out the graduation show later this year. Yeah, uh, and if you have any remaining questions, don't forget to ask them in the, in the chat, and we will have, uh, yeah, like we, have, we will have a tutor and a student answering all these questions, and they have been typing away like very <laughs> <laughs> intrinsically typing uh, post in the teams. Yeah, so <laughs> we, yeah, we, we, we can move on to, to Winnie and Ayn, who are going to answer the questions. Uh, Hi. Um, I'm Ayn. I'm the fourth year student in fine arts and I'm actually in Ottenau. Hello, my name is Winnie Kupelbeck. I'm a theory tutor at fine arts. And yeah, so today we'll just answer a few questions um, from the chat that you have sent. Um, a lot of the questions that I, we also noticed that a lot of you asked what is Ottenau and since I'm an Ottenau student myself, <laughs> I can probably talk a bit more about it. Um, in Autonome, it's more of a specialization in terms of this um, display and presentation method. So a lot of Autonome students actually covers with video works, um, performance art, or even textiles, even sculpt ceramic works, etc. And the thing is, uh, it's not the medium that really makes Autonome Autonome. It's more of like the way you approach your artistic practice, because also in sculpture department, you can also make performance art. There's a student that also makes performance art, but also incorporates um, sculptures in it. And also in painting, you can also do um, textile works, but incorporate into a painting. So technically speaking, this it's more of a, the autonomous is more of a talking and conceptual based uh, department, in my opinion. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, thank you, I. We also had a lot of questions about the portfolio. So, for example, there's one question, how do I know if my portfolio is strong enough that I actually have a chance to get in? Um, first of all, I want to announce that there is an online portfolio day on the 9th and the 10th of March. And you can there ask questions about your portfolio and if it's good enough, etc. But also, we want uh, a versatile portfolio so that you explore many different mediums, so sculpture, painting, and uh, video, for example, and that you also show a keen interest into the conversation about art. So, not only art making, but also interested in visiting museums and uh, reading texts about art. Uh, because when you study here, you also need to contribute to the community, in fact, and to reflect upon each other's practices and on current contemporary art making. Um, so that's what we want to see in your portfolio. Uh, another question that I can answer to is, uh, what is the difference between the three op options in the second year? So in the second year, we have three different sections. One is sculpture, the other one is Latino, and the other one is painting, printmaking. And in fact, the three sections are quite free in what you do. So it's not that you're forced in painting to do painting and in sculpture to do sculpture and so on. But uh, in the first year, in fact, we see a, where is your inclination towards uh, to and what is your strength? And then we, we advise you or you yourself, you feel like, well, I go to that section, for example. Um, so yeah, that's a sh an, an answer to that. Yeah, um, another question by Tuva. She asked, here, here, okay. Can I make music at fine arts department? Are there any other students that make sound art or music? Of course you can. You can use sound art in the um, fine arts department and um, or music in fact. There's a lot actually a lot of students, as you can see from the pre-exam video, there's a lot of um, audio works that are actually by students. So of course you can. Yeah, and also very uh, practical questions. Students want to know how many students are accepted every year. I think we have between 35 and 40 students accepted at the proper Thursday each year. So um, yes, very, very short answer. Um, yeah, the question of music is already answered. Uh, do you have still a question that you want to answer? I can, I, can, I can also elaborate a bit on the double degree program. Many students had a question about the double degree program. The double degree program is a program that we offer together with the University in Leiden and it only starts from the second year onwards. So you, after that you finish your first year, you can apply for that program and it's both so, uh, uh, an academic program at Leiden University and studio practice here at uh, the KBK. And it's, uh, it are more credits that you obtain in the end because you also get two degrees. You get a degree in art, science and society and a, and a degree at the KBK in fine arts. Um, so yeah, that's very short what I can say about it. But uh, you can only get accepted for that for the second year onwards. Uh, there's this question. <laughs> Here, are you interested in seeing live drawings and studies in the portfolio? <laughs> well, we want we want to see. <laughs> And yeah, not, not everything. You, have, you, you can make a selection, but why wouldn't we want to see live drawings and what else? Uh, uh, and, and studies. Yeah, it's, it's part of your practice. The process is also very important. Not only present masterpieces in your portfolio, but also how you work and how do you explore artistic practice. That's um, very good to have an insight in. Um, oh, anonymous asks, can you give an example of an assignment that would be given in the first year? Well, since I'm a fourth year now, I can remember one assignment that I had to do. It was an autonome class, and the assignment was that we had to do a practice on when there is a pressure, when there is pressure, there is when there is a point, there is a pressure, and you can interpret that in how, however you want in any type of form of media. So that's also an assignment uh, that could be given in the first year. And then uh, a question about the interviews. Can I get interviewed online online if I am not from the Netherlands? Um, but in former years, we did indeed do online interviews, mainly also due to COVID, because students could just not be present. 
But I think with information that comes soon, how we will do the admissions process. But former years students also from abroad came in to do the interviews, so they then go to the Netherlands. But we are not yet having made a decision about that. Last question? Yeah, or should we take our last question then? Um, oh yeah, do you need a PWO diploma for the double degree program? Um, uh, that that we should check, check at Leiden University. I'm not I'm not quite sure for that. But please, if you do have more from this kind of specific questions, you can always uh, send an email to the office fineart.office at kvkprints.nl. Uh, yeah, we unfortunately we have to wrap up, but we will continue replying questions online. So um, yeah, back to Jojo and Gwen, please. Thank you. Yes, this is the end of today's broadcast. Um, unfortunately, we don't have any more time right now to answer more questions. However, there will be online portfolio meetings on the 9th and 10th of March, um, for which further details will be communicated on the Cow Lookout website. Yes, as mentioned my, uh, in the past several times, please ask questions and you can send your questions to fineart.office at kbk.nl like Winnie mentioned just now or follow us on Instagram at kbk fine arts and yeah I think I think that's it yeah yeah so, hope yeah. to see you at kbk soon and good luck with your applications thank you for tuning in Thank <laughs> you.